Okay, welcome to the next part of this 82-2203. We are now with non-noisy tubes, so I've not checked them at high gain. A little bit of microphonics on V1, that's almost unavoidable with the circuit, but I'll, I'll make sure it's not bad. Um, so we've got TAD 7025s for V1, 2, and 3, and we've got Mullard reissue EL34s. And all the weird noise is gone. Hurrah, we're done, right? Well, no. Um, even with the bias set to its hottest level, its least negative, that's only negative 50 volts. Um, I'd really like to be giving that down to like negative 33 at its maximum or minimum setting, depending on how you think about it. And as a result, these EEL uh, 34s are biased at, what is it, it is, uh, they're drawing about 18.5% each, idle, um, which is very cold. And by cold, I mean that is uh, dual rectifier cold. No one who likes tone likes that cold. Let's see how the, uh, the high gain stuff is sounding. Let's have that about three o'clock and just loud enough to hear. This is with a single coil. That microphonics is very slight. So overall, I think the amp is sounding very, very he healthy, but my God, that is a cold, cold bias. So what are we going to do? Well, the uh, 2203 circuit for 6550s very, differs from the circuit for EL34s in usually three places, in this case only two. Number one, the 6550s often have 150K or 200, or even 82 Ks here. I believe I measured these are 150. Um, and these are usually 150 or 220 K with EL 34s. Uh, the difference between 150 K and 220 K is not huge. The amp will still have tons of low end with these. So these can stay. And then I think I measured this as a 12 or 15 K resistor here. It's on the uh, raw bias feed from the, the uh, secondary of the output transformer, sorry, power transformer before it gets to the uh, rectification diode uh, for the bias. And um, that could be increased to make this uh, less negative. So that with this at its maximum setting, um, instead of having negative 50 volts, we'd have like negative 33-ish. But that would require uh, removing an original pyre from this amp. That seems to be just fine. So the other place I could do that is here. I believe I measured this as a 47K, maybe a 56K, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm red-green colorblind if you haven't heard that in other videos. So I don't go by the stripes, I'll measure it. But that means that I could reduce this resistor to reduce the maximum bias setting, which is also the least uh, negative voltage. And so what I can do while maintaining the originality of the amp as a whole is I can put a resistor in parallel with this one and change the range of this pot. And I would like to get this so that it goes, oh, between 33 volts, negative 33 volts and negative 48 volts, maybe as a, for instance, 50 to 33, maybe. That's all negative. So what I need to do is uh, figure out the math that will get me there if I change this resistor. Um, it's now, if it's a 47K, I imagine, Probably somewhere in the 27K range will get me there. Uh, so it's just a matter of adding another one in parallel and uh, uh, doing it temporarily, uh, just resting leads against leads till I'm sure I've got it. And then this is one of the few places where I think it is acceptable for me to tack solder the new component to the old component because there's not a lot of mass to that. And then I can retain the original in case 
some collector ever wants to buy this in case 82, uh, 2203s go through the, the roof. But because I will be soldering to this on the top side to do that, I want to make sure that I'm not introducing a problem with the solder joint coming bad on the bottom. So I'm not putting these nuts in place to put this board fully back until that has been done and I have verified that the solder joints on the bottom are not negatively affected. I could put a resistor on the bottom rather than the top, but then you're hiding from a future tech what's been done. Or I could remove this pyre and put in a brand new 27K, but again, if this goes in a plastic bag to be kept with the amp for sale to a collector, there's that additional labor. you got to pull the board to install it or it gets lost. I think in this situation, a tack soldered parallel resistor is the proper uh, choice to make for uh, all the reasons already stated. So let me uh, play around with this and report back on what will give us a good bias range. All right, making some good progress here. So Back of the napkin math told me that uh, once I measured it, that stock resistor was a 56K. And so the back of the napkin math said I could probably put a 27K, I'm oh, sorry, 47K across that and end up in a good place. And I, indeed I have. Now with the bias trim pot at noon, it's right at 58% idle dissipation, which is perfect. Now I grabbed that 47k because it was the first one i came across that's a carbon comp i'm not going to send this app out with a carbon comp there and it won't be up in the air like that but i'll go through my stuff and find a oxide or metal film or carbon film and put that in there neatly but uh now i know that the amp is behaving well <laughs> It's got that thinness that the uh, stock 2203 has with that 1000 pike of air bright cap. But it's not as shrieky as some. Let me turn that volume up and they'll master down a bit. In fact, it sounds kind of pretty. A little bit of a slight noise. Well, actually, it seems to be gone now in the mid spot. Turn the presence and treble down. That's sound, sounding quite nice. Let's see, high gain stuff. Again, the single coil strat, and I'm sitting two feet from the transformer. It's gonna be the noisiest possible. So, uh... I roll the volume down on the guitar. We're in high gain. And here's where I'm gonna do a quick test to see if there's any oscillations. No way in hell I would have played it like that, not this close to the cab at least, but uh, there's no self-oscillation. It's sounding like itself again. So I will uh, find a permanent resistor to go home in this spot and attach it. Uh, very close to the old one and verify that the solder joint on the bottom it, on both sides is good. And then we'll do some high volume testing with some different guitars and I'll make sure that the owner hears those videos and uh, is uh, very happy with the sound of everything. And it, in the first video on this, I mentioned that some players wanted the bright cap here removed from the volume pot. The owner wants it left in place and I will be glad to oblige.
little out of tune, sorry. But this is a good place to be. <laughs>